I'm Dr. Jerome F. Coleman of the First Baptist Church of Crestmont, and welcome to Time Out Thursdays, where each week myself or one of our clergy or ministerial staff uh, will push a pause button on your week in the hopes of giving you a word that will inspire you and encourage you, um, maybe at times convict you uh, to draw you closer to God. But our goal is um, to edify you and to inspire you and encourage you uh, to help you get through the rest of the week. Um, I was meditating on Psalm 122, uh, verse 1, where the psalmist declares, I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. Let us pray. Father God, we bless your name and we praise you, honor you, magnify you. Lord, we simply ask for you to have your will and your way. We need to hear from you. We need a word from you. If we don't hear from you, what will we do? One of you more each day, show us your perfect way. There is no other way that we can live. In Jesus' mighty, matchless, marvelous, splendiferous name, we do pray. And the people of God simply said, Amen. I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. There are several Psalms in which the psalmist, plural, declare their affection for the house of God. Psalm 26 verse 8 says, Lord, I've loved the habitation of your house and the place where your glory dwells. When circumstances conspired to prevent the sons of Korah from getting to the house of God, they wrote in Psalm 42, I pour out my soul within me, for I used to go with the multitude. I went with them to the house of God with the voice of joy and praise. And then in Psalm 84, once again, the sons of Korah, in anticipation of making the pilgrimage to the house of God, declare how lovely is your tabernacle, O Lord of hosts. My soul longs, even faints for the courts of the Lord. My heart and my flesh cry out for the living God. Even your altars, O Lord of hosts, my King and my God. Blessed are those who dwell in your house. They will still be praising you. For a day in your courts is better than a thousand elsewhere. I'd rather be a doorkeeper in the house of my God than to dwell in the tents of wickedness. Psalm 122 is among those Psalms that declare affection, love, passion for the house of God. I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. Before COVID-19, there were some who came to the house of God strictly out of duty habit assignment or guilt and were actually relieved that they were prevented from going to the house of God and will use this time period as an excuse to never return. But my Bible says, Hebrews 10, 25, do not forsake the assembling of yourselves together as some are in the habit of doing. And that is not a suggestion. In the Greek, it's in the imperative and in the context of Hebrews 10, 25, it's a command. Do not forsake the assembling of yourselves together as some are in the habit of doing. It was in the house, John chapter 20, that Thomas experienced resurrection. It was in the house, Psalm 73, that Asaph experienced revelation. It was in the house, Acts chapter 4, that the disciples received confirmation. All I'm trying to do is encourage those of you who are experiencing intimidation, trepidation, apprehension, and hesitation. It's time to get back into the house of God because there are some things that you cannot experience unless you're in the house. It was in the house that Thomas experienced the resurrection of Christ. It was in the house that Asaph got revelation in terms of his walk with God. It was in the house that the disciples got confirmation to continue in their ministry. There are some things that you cannot experience unless you get into the house. I was glad when they said unto me, let us go unto the house of God. Many scholars believe that the psalm was written after the people of God were released from over 70 years of Babylonian captivity and returned to Israel. It was approximately 72 years from the destruction of the temple in 587 BC to the rebuilding of the temple in 515 BC. Imagine not 19 months like we've been in this 
this pandemic, not 570 days like we've been in the midst of COVID-19, but imagine over 70 years of not being able to worship like you used to worship, not being able to praise like you used to praise, not being able to lift up holy hands, put your hands together, serve, give, get to the altar of God, fellowship, imagine, not 19 months, imagine, not over 570 days, but imagine over 70 years of not being able to get to the house of God. That means that some people would never see the house again. No wonder the psalmist said, I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. I was glad that I lived long enough for somebody to say, let me go or let us go into the house of the Lord. I was ecstatic that I recovered and somebody said to me, let us go into the house of the Lord. See, we used to sing a song in the church, glad to be in the service. Glad to be in the service. Glad to be in the service one more time. He didn't have to let me live. He didn't have to let me live, but I'm glad to be in the service one more time. And since some people didn't get a one more time, you need to realize that you might not get a one more time. Stop waiting and assuming that you can get back into the house of God at any time. Stop taking for granted granted that you'll get a one more time. And even if you get a one more time, your one more time could possibly be your last time because no one knows the day or the hour. And so don't let another week pass by. Don't let another week go by before you get back into the house of God. And when you get into the house of God, you make sure you enter into his gates with thanksgiving and enter into his courts with praise. Be thankful unto him and bless his name. Why? For the Lord is good. His mercy is everlasting and his truth endures to all generations. Give him the best praise that you possibly can. Praise him like it's your first time. Praise him like it's your only time. Praise him like it's your last time. You may not be able to take your mask off, but you can still put your hands together. You may be socially distant, but now it gives you more room to do your dance. You may not be able to take your mask off, but you can still sing his praises. You may be socially distant, but now it gives you more room to stretch your hands. I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. Here's your assignment. Read the rest of Psalm 122. It's in the house of the Lord where we can find fellowship. It's in the house of the Lord where we can give thanks. It's in the house of the Lord where we can testify to God's goodness. It's in the house of the Lord that we can pray corporately. It's in the house of the Lord that we gain new perspective. It's in the house of the Lord where we can find peace. It's in the house of the Lord where we can prosper. It's in the house of the Lord where we can seek the good of God's people. David said, Psalm 27 verse 4, one thing I have desired of the Lord, that one thing will I seek for, that I may dwell in his house all the days of my life, to gaze upon the beauty of the Lord and to inquire in his temple. I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. And on a Thursday evening, I am in tiptoe anticipation of Sunday morning because I am expecting an encounter with a resurrected Savior. I am expecting revelation from a God to help me walk in a way that brings him glory, honor, and praise. I am in in anticipation of confirmation that God will say to me, well done, thy good and faithful servant. I'm in anticipation of having an experience with a resurrected Savior. And so I'm excited. I'm encouraged. I'm so glad that the psalmist said, I'm glad he said unto me, and I'm glad he said unto you, let us go into the house of the Lord.